I'm Carl Taylor. Hello, I'm Urs Reichel. And we're here for another how-to. Uh, thank you very much, Carl. Well, you messed up my studio in the morning and now you're trashing my equipment. Yes. That well, is it worthwhile. Uh, hopefully I'm not trashing your equipment, but we certainly have got your equipment in a big pile of trash. Okay. Um, but this makes a fantastic backdrop for a location photograph. And as you can see, we've got our lovely model uh, Marit there uh, in a sort of street urban style uh, outfit in this very, very busy background, which is difficult to photograph. What I'm doing is underexposing all this background uh, with the camera, uh, keeping the exposure down, and then overexposing the scene again with the lights, okay. which then end up at the right exposure, if you know okay. what I mean. Setting um, up uh, three lights in total? Yes, three lights. So we, we see we've got these two big cranes in the background. I've got one light, which is a, a Cirrus L, just here with the uh, honeycomb grid. This light is shining onto that crane there. We have positioned another light behind there at the back, which is illuminating the crane up high there. Okay. And that's being done brilliantly with the RFS trigger, sending the signal to the Cirrus L, even yeah. at a great distance able to trigger these remotely. But our main light source for our model is coming from a move pack with the Para 222. And uh, the reason I've selected the Para 222 is because we can work with it at a distance, focus the beam, yeah. got a nice broad light all the way down the model. Doesn't look like we need it at the moment because we've got bright, su uh, bright sunlight on the model. Mm -hmm. But when the sun goes behind the clouds again, that gives us a lovely yeah. broad light down the side of the model while the rest of the scene remains underexposed okay. and less cluttered because of it. And we still have some variation range because the power is in a medium position. We can focus it a little bit more if you need more or defocus if you want to have a soft light. So Absolutely. You are yeah. at the moment, flexible. At the moment, I've got it focused a little bit more because I don't want the light spreading too much okay. into the outer so like area. So like a huge spot, you use it on her. Exactly. Okay. More of a spot onto our model. Um, but it makes for a very interesting composition and opportunity when we can take these Cirrus L lights and put them wherever we, wherever we want. Yeah. We're not restricted by cables. Yeah. I can put one 100 meters away over there like we've got one here and obviously the move pack there. So that versatility means we can highlight different elements of the scene. Exactly. And, and you know, we could have got more Cirrus lights and actually started highlighting other little pockets within the scene as well. Right. But we've just got a three light set up here and it looks like it's working really okay. well. Fantastic. And uh, as soon as that sun goes behind the cloud again, I can carry on shooting. Okay, okay. so yeah. let's wait for this. Let's wait for this. There's a nice big cloud coming, look. Yeah, but uh, it's not coming, it's, it's there. It's there, but, but it is moving this way. Come on, you sun. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There's a grey bit just on the end there, a little niblet of it. I reckon that might be my last opportunity. Shit, is that light coming back? I think you get some. We might get some. And here you can see. Here's the light that is 100 meters away from my shooting spot, lighting up that crane there. And with the Cirrus L, no wires, no cables, fantastic. Um, 
Well, we've wrapped that one up, Urs, and I'm very happy with that. Well done, Merritt. That was a fantastic job, especially balancing on this very precarious steel works. Um, I'll just explain yeah, what please. I did. Um, so, we had two lights onto the steelwork, one grid spot around uh, here and one a little bit higher up. And then we had the Para 222 illuminating Merritt there. I was shooting from over here and I was shooting from low down in this lovely pool of water on these blocks so that I could get a little bit of reflection in the water from Merritt and the light on Merritt in here. And it's a wide angle shot and I'm using the lines of this steelworks coming in and this wall coming across. Uh, and these were the two Cirrus lights giving us our spotlights onto uh, the metalwork behind. So while the lighting, oh, while the lighting, <laughs> Well, the lighting was very important uh, to make the shot. For me, uh, as when we were looking around trying to find places, and as you pointed out, this is a great backdrop because although it's very busy, it's all fairly neutral, yeah, exactly. lovely neutral tones. And then by illuminating Merritt and the skin tones, they're popping away from uh, these neutral uh, metal tones. So that's uh, two shots that we've wrapped up here in the scrapyard. It's been very successful. Uh, remember safety first, if you're wandering around scrapyards, get okay. permission, Absolutely, <laughs> as we yeah. did, as we, we did. did. Yes. And um, thank you very much to Merritt, brilliant job. And uh, anything yes. to add to that? Nothing at all, perfectly. Thank you very much for showing all this. Thank you very much as well for helping out. Okay, so we'll see you next time.